We don't need more religion. We need a revival of love in action. Because if we're not careful, we'll start talking about Jesus instead of living like Jesus. Know that love is better than hate and hope is better than despair. The good of the whole is better than the whims of a few and God wants everybody, red, yellow, black, brown, and white taken care of. God wants everybody, gay and straight, taken care of. God wants justice, always has, always will. The Lynchburg Revival is about Jesus and justice. Whether it's immigration or gun violence, these are all things that, that we believe Christians should be deeply concerned about. Lynchburg's a small town, but in many ways it represents um, the complexity of American Christianity. Liberty University, the largest Christian college in the country, one of the largest Christian colleges in the world, is here. Uh, and Jerry Falwell uh, is the president of that. We're very troubled by the public uh, um, persona of Christianity that he has represented. Not only is he a supporter of Trump, but he's called Donald Trump the dream president of Christians. And we think God's got a different dream. We asked some of the kids in our neighborhood, what are you thinking about the new president? And literally, 11-year-old kids are saying things like, is my family gonna have to move back to Puerto Rico? Is my friend Muhammad gonna be able to live here? Because he's Muslim, and I'm not sure if Muslims can stay here. Are we gonna be slaves again? Um, the, the Barna Research Group, they went to every state in the U.S. and they asked young non-Christians, what do you think of when you hear the word Christian? The number one answer was anti-gay. Number two was judgmental. And number three was hypocritical. And uh, I'll stop there because the list doesn't get much better, you know, but it's that we're irrelevant, we're prudish, we're self-righteous. Those are the things that people said when they heard the word Christian. And what didn't even register on the polling statistics was love. You know, I, I always prefer to talk with people, not at them or around them or something. And so we've, we've been reaching out for over a year, you know, to try to create a conversation, either privately or publicly, with Jerry Falwell. Um, we, we've wanted to have a conversation around, would Jesus support Donald Trump? I mean, that seems like a very fair question to dialogue on. Many of the alumni and students have stressed their concerns that they want liberty to be known for its love for Jesus more than its love for Trump. I've been in contact with other folks at Liberty. I've, I've preached at Liberty. Uh, one of the uh, executive leaders at Liberty I'd been in dialogue with, and I said, hey, we're doing this thing in Lynchburg. I'd love for you to come, you know, and we'd also uh, love to join students and alumni on campus to pray. Our request to pray was met with a letter that says, if you walk on campus, you'll, you could be arrested for up to a year in jail and $2,500 fine. And, and not only was it Liberty University, we were banned from the Baptist church that Liberty's connected to. And like, man, I've been banned before, I'll be honest, but never from a church, <laughs> never from a Christian college. The door has been closed. It's very clear and locked out. We're locked out. But we can still write down our prayers and uh, bring those to show that this was a genuine uh, request to pray together. And we would love to hear your prayers, but here are ours. And, um, and who better to, to deliver that than Tony? We have strong commitments against capital punishment. Strongly believe that the government has a role to play in providing health insurance for the poor. We're concerned about the tax laws that have taken away benefits that were given to the poor and are giving more money to the rich. You, you can't just decide you're going to do church another way and abandon mercy and canonize greed. When we see the image of God being crushed in detention centers and we show up when we see the image of God being crushed by mass incarceration, when we see health care that doesn't give health nor care, and we show up.
Sometimes I wonder if these wars were domestic. Would they think twice about bombing enemy lairs in residential areas, in Beverly Hills, in Times Square? Would they learn how to compromise, de-escalate tensions, learn to fight fire with water, war with peace? We have concerns about militarism. We're concerned about refugees. And these are people who are refugees because of political invasions. So these are some of the concerns where we differ from, let's say, the religious right. That if we follow what God says, we can address the ugly realities of poverty. Well, the interesting thing is, like, all of these big ideas of justice, they usually have their, their roots somewhere on the ground. You know, you think like Montgomery. Yeah. The bus boycotts, you know, you think, you think of Ferguson, you think of these different places and there are things that have happened there that have been catalysts for really changing the world or changing the country. So you think like, wow, something good could happen in Lynchburg. And it's a beautiful historic place that we are, the E.C. Glass Auditorium where Martin Luther King spoke in 1962. And one of the things he said is, people keep telling us to cool down. And if we get any cooler, we'd be frozen. This, this is not a time to just chill out. This is a time to stand up and to, to, to speak and to challenge injustice. Also, hearing from people who have been directly affected by these things, um, folks that have survived racism and incarceration and, and dreamers that are currently living in our country who fear for their future, you know, the, these are the people we'll hear from. So part of what we've been very deliberate about um, as we gather is to decentralize the white voices that have dominated evangelicalism in our country. My full name is Carlos Alberto Rodriguez, Otro T. Rivera Pagan, Burgo, Pardo, Garcia, Caquia, Nazario. But you can call me Carlos. I need some good news. America needs some good news. We, we of course, have American exceptionalism, but we're the only country out of the 25 wealthiest that do not offer some form of universal health care. Donald Trump has a gospel. He's got a proclamation, and that proclamation is America first. The Bible doesn't say God bless America. It says God so loved the world. And if, if someone's hurting on the other side of a border, like that matters to God. It should matter to us as Christians. I believe that America is in need of nothing less than an exorcism from a very old principality of white supremacy. Well, I have deep struggles with those who tend to call themselves conservatives theologically today. Because they call themselves conservatives, but they liberally resist and ignore so much of God's character. For the president to have the audacity to come out against immigrants and then head to church and not be afraid of what might be said. Uh, not afraid that somebody might call him out in love and in truth. On Easter Sunday morning. I'm much more concerned right now about the church's affair with empire. Love needs to come alive again in this country because Dr. King said a country that continues to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching a spiritual death. Yes. And it may be that America is the only country in the world where you can say you're pro-guns, pro-death penalty, pro-war, and still pro-life. Do these things have to be? Or can they be changed? I think we're seeing some changes. We're seeing young people rising up, right? They've been rising up. The movement for black lives has been rising up. Parkland students are the newest iteration of it, and thank God for them. Like we, we, there's a movement that is standing on the side of life right now, and we get to be a part of it. Before every major social change, everybody says, this is impossible. And after every change, everybody goes, that was inevitable. The time we're living in right now, people can't imagine an America free of guns and gun violence, you know, but, um, you know, I think we have to. We, that, that's where faith comes in. And 
I think it was Bobby Kennedy that said, some people look at the world as it is and say, why? And other people imagine the world as it could be and say, why not? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the witch like me. Great. 